Hello everyone, this is Manju and today's true crime case shocked the entire nation of India. Three generations, 11 family members, all dead. Was it the neighbor, a rival business, or something more sinister? Now this is the neighbor who discovered the bodies. In India, everyone in the neighborhood is well acquainted with each other's lives. So when something falls out of place, people become curious and try to find out why. First thing the neighbors noticed was that the milk that was delivered in the morning, no one from the family came to pick it up. And the family businesses that are usually open really early in the morning weren't open. This led the neighbor to knock on the door and discover the bodies. Now by the time the police came, things were hectic. Media was already present. There was people all over the streets. They just could not get into the house. There was even random people inside the house recording and sending videos to their friends and those videos went viral. Now I did see one of these videos online while researching the case and let me tell you, it is disturbing. I would not recommend watching it. The officer that first came to the scene said he was shocked and when he looked at the family, he was reminded of a bayan tree because of how the bodies were hanging, just like how the tree branches of a bayan tree are hanging. Ten people were found hanging, one was found strangled and hanging from a doorknob in a room, and their family dog, who was alive, was found terrified, tied on the rooftop terrace. Now a little background of the Chanduan family. It was a household of three generations. They lived in a double-story house in Buari's Santanagar neighborhood in Delhi for 20 years. The family ran a successful grocery shop and a plywood business. The family was loved in the community and was known to be very generous, whether it be giving money or food to people in need or even family members or just neighbors. And no one really hated anyone. The family was also known to be religious. According to the neighbors, no one hated the family and they seemed to be a typical happy family, nothing out of the ordinary. And mostly everyone in the family was highly educated, from bachelors to masters to PhDs. When the police came to the scene, they all looked at the bodies and just found it was very weird. Um, the bodies had been blindfolded, the mouths were taped, ears were plugged with cotton, and their faces were covered in pieces of cloth which looked like it was from a bed sheet. Some of the bodies, not all, had their hands and feet tied as well with like cable wire. Now the public ended up putting a lot of pressure on the police to find out what happened. Their house wasn't in a secluded area, it was in a pretty busy area. So that just scared the public even more that an entire household is dead. What if it was them? So quickly just to calm the public to show them that the police are doing something, they ruled it as a murder case. However, during the investigation, there was no signs of a break-in or struggle and everyone was still wearing their gold jewelry. Like, if it was a theft, the money that was in the house would be gone. The jewelry that they were wearing, pure gold jewelry, that would be gone. But the money, the jewelry, and mind you, um, they were getting ready for a wedding, like one of the daughters was getting married. So they had a lot of gold in the house but nothing was taken now suicide was also quickly ruled out because in their minds they were thinking why would they tie up their hands blindfold themselves if they wanted to die and plus there was no suicide note um a lot of the suicide cases that they have worked on is pretty straightforward there's a suicide note and they don't really go to the extent of tying themselves up and their arms up like it just made no sense of why it would be suicide so the police were pretty stumped at this point like if it's not a murder if it's not a suicide what is it like what's the angle does someone commit murder and then make it look like a suicide like but then wouldn't they tie untie their hands like what's going on the police were pretty stumped um so they kept searching the house trying to find more clues and they found 11 diaries that belonged to the family. They didn't think much of it. They just thought, okay, you know, maybe it just belongs to the family members. Um, and they'll find clues. Because people usually share their deepest thoughts. 
um, in the di- in diaries. They also noticed that the building across the street had a camera facing the house. So they decided to watch the footage starting from the night before to the morning of. And nothing seemed out of the norm. Now when the forensic team came in and started taking pictures and labeling everything, you could tell they were disturbed one after another. And the bodies were so closely hanged that they had to touch and push them like they were pushing curtains to get to the next body. Now after they were all done, they called the ambulances and there were 11 ambulances and it took two hours to move all the bodies um, out of the house because it was so crowded in front of the house one by one an ambulance would come back up put one body in fight the crowd um, to go back out then another one would back in like it just was completely hectic it took two hours now while all this is happening the police are still searching and near the bodies they found evidence of a ritual or like some sort of um, prayer had taken place and at this moment they were like hmm why would there be this thing like why would they have done a ritual and so now they decided to look through the cctv footage again but this time they were keeping an eye out for the family members to see if they were acting weird Now, as they were watching the CCTV footage, they saw that in the evening of the night before, Tina, who was Lalit's wife, and their son returned home with four wooden stools. And then a bit later, she comes back with Neetu with plastic stools. Now, soon after, Lalit's son is seen opening the plywood store, their own store, and taking out a bundle of wires, which he takes upstairs. Now, at a closer look, they see that the wires that he has in his hands were the ones that were used to tie up some of the members' hands and feet. Now at this point, the head constable um, had locked himself in his cabin and just in one go, he read all 11 diaries and he had mentioned how disturbed he was just reading everything and when they received analysis back for the diaries, They were pretty sure that it would be a match for Lalit because of what the diaries contained. But in reality, it came back as a match for Lalit's nieces, Priyanka and Neetu. Now in the diaries, quote-unquote Lalit would say that he was possessed by his father and tell his nieces, Priyanka and Neetu, to write what the father is telling them to say. Now let's talk about Lalit. Lalit was the youngest out of the brothers and once the father who was Bhopal Singh died, a lot of the responsibility went on him. Reason being is because the oldest did not live at home. The middle brother, he was so busy with work that he couldn't handle the household responsibility. So naturally, everything fell on him. He became so controlling that whatever he said, it was like law. He said it once. It's written in stone. This is the law. You need to follow it. Now, Lalith made it seem like it wasn't him that wanted to control their lives or tell them what to do. Oh, no. It was Bhopal Singh's spirit slash ghost possessing him and telling him, telling the family through him what to do, what to say, who in the family to control and not control. So... If the grandfather is back, we should all listen to him. Now, when did this all start? Now, according to the diaries, the officers said that the first entry was from 2007, which was right after Bhopal Singh's death. And now around that time, Lalit actually lost his voice. He had lost his voice due to um, an accident. There was an incident where he was caught in a fire and... According to him, and didn't really make sense medically, according to the doctors, the fire and the smoke damaged his lungs and vocal cords, and due to that reason, he lost his voice. In the diaries, it mentioned that if Lalit wants his voice back, I will grant him, meaning Bhopal Singh will help him um, get his voice back, all 
everyone needs to do is, everyone in the family, all they have to do is say a prayer every day, couple times a day together and have like this prayer time. And slowly, he will get his voice back. And it will be because of Bhopal Singh and his ghost and God being pleased with them. Now, the family was like, okay, let's do it. Let's have this prayer. So they did this prayer and it took about a year. And while they were having a prayer one day, they realized that there was this voice. And they turned, looked around and they saw that Lalit's voice miraculously came back that he was also singing and chanting this prayer and Lalit at this point didn't even realize that he was talking and chanting the prayer so with this miracle people started believing like the family members started believing that um that yes they have been blessed from god and that Bhopal Singh is back and it's because of Bauji, it's because of him and his blessing that uh, Lalit got his voice back. So these small little things just kept happening. And then it became um, something to do with his business, like through Lalit. Um, the, and then it became about his their businesses. Like they weren't financially well off in the beginning. But according to the diaries and Bhopal Singh, Bhopal Singh told the family of how to run the shops, what to do, where to put the money, how to invest it, all this. And they started seeing that financially they were doing better. And because of that, they're like, oh, wow. Um, first, uh, Bauji fixed his throat, his voice. Now we are becoming more financially stable. Like it's all a miracle wow 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 he really does come and talk to us and tell us what to do he's still leading us through um from the afterlife like he just needs to possess lalit and even in the diaries it said that do not worry i do not take lalit's energy away and just a good night's rest uh lalit will be fine do not worry about him the oh oh my goodness the only way that Lalit will be affected and his body will be um, affected is when you don't listen, when you don't listen and go against my words, then Lalit and his wife Tina and their son, their bodies will be affected because I will not be pleased because God will not be pleased. For 11 years from 2007 to the deaths of the family in 2018 every day this family would wake up looking for these diaries looking for what they need to do and who they need to look out for like oh uh one of the children was uh playing too much on their phone watch out for him or that uh the daughters in the family like the cousins they're fighting too much you need to make them uh, love each other again or that one of the daughter-in-laws she is not happy spending time in the kitchen but she needs to learn to do all the kitchen work in the family by herself in a calm state of mind so well only then she will receive happiness like it was insane things that were inside these diaries and the people of the family no matter how highly educated they were, believed them. They followed them. Joint Commissioner Alok Kumar is the one that read the diaries. And he said a week prior to the deaths, there was a detailed outlining of what is going to happen. Now it says here, we have found handwritten notes detailing how hands and legs are to be tied and are quite similar to the manner in which the bodies of the 10 people were found. They're exhaustive notes and we are studying them. Details directions provided in the diaries match how the bodies were found with their faces covered, mouths taped, and cotton balls in ears. The bodies were discovered hanged in batches of three, which is what the diaries also state. The diary stated that Bebe, who was the elderly woman, could not stand and hence she should be lying on the bed, which was consistent with the discovery of her being found strangled on the bed. The diary also mentions everyone will tie their own hands 
and when the ritual is done, then everyone will help each other untie their hands, which indicates that the family was not expecting to die. Now, the police believe that Lalith and his wife tied up everyone's hands and legs because according to the diary, it needed to be tied a certain way. And it's pretty hard to tie like wires on your own hands. They also noticed that even the scarves were placed in a certain way with the same distance amongst each other. Like everything was so precise when it came to the bodies and how the items on the bodies were placed. Now, no one in the family believed that they would die. The diary said that Bhopal Singh would come and rescue them before it's too late. And then God will be happy, making them pure from their mistakes and sins. And this would lead to their future being even brighter and much more um, stable, financially stable. Psychologists believe that the entire case revolves around Lalith having psychosis. And... When he lost his voice, it was due to a fire in his plywood business shop and he was actually locked in. And according to them, he must have suffered some PTSD, which not which did not get treated. And even previously to that incident, he did have severe head injury. So he had some trauma, which never got treated. And it just kept getting worse and worse over the years and untreated mental disorders could lead to psychosis and hearing voices and just believing things that aren't actually true but because this family believed in Lalith so much that psychologists believe that this family then had shared psychotic disorder and through this, everyone was ready to follow Lalit and they never questioned what Lalit said. Now, according to the neighbors, about two weeks prior to the incident, the family had a very lavish engagement party for one of the daughters. Now, they said that they did find it a little weird that beca- uh, when they tried, you know, talking and having just like little normal chit chat, um, just a few days prior to the engagement, Lalit seemed very closed off, that his mood had switched. Um, And he became very quiet, like he wouldn't answer any questions. Um, And when the neighbors asked like the wife, Tina, or just other family members, like what's going on? What's wrong with Lalit? Tina would just brush it off and she would just kind of hesitate and just be like, oh, nothing's going on. He's just dealing with a lot. Now, investigators believe that the daughter was engaged and soon she was going to be married. And then he would lose one of the family members to control. And if not even that, not even lost control, what happens if the daughter who was going to move away and get married, she shared with someone what was happening in the household? Because this family for 11 years did not share one thing with the outside world what was happening, right? So like they believe that Lalit was actually scared. Well, what happens if this gets out, right? So maybe this is what led to the murders or suicide the police don't even know what it's called right now they're saying that it's called an accidental death because according to the diaries there was no intention of actually dying they just happened to die throughout all of this the relatives of the chanduwan family could not come to terms of what the police were saying that how could such a highly educated family do this right and plus like with how nosy neighbors are like how did this go under the radar for so long it was shocking for everyone the relatives the neighbors everyone so right now there's only one surviving member of the chanduwan family which was the brother that didn't live at home he lived in rajasthan and he had to come back and do the rituals like the death rituals and of course it was hard for him he never thought in a million years that he would have to one after another perform the rituals of his entire family and he did decide to donate everyone's eyes because he felt that through this tragedy there should be some light and if he can help someone else's life through this it would help him come to terms and kind of settle even though like it's pretty hard to not just lose your family but to lose your family in this way and that is it for today's case Until next time, bye.